days out from the show. Um, I just sent him a, a physique update. I was in my tidy whiteies, you know what I'm saying? I just like, you know, I flexed on him and he and he looked at my legs and he was like, dude, sign up. I'm like, sign up for what? What are you talking about? He's like, bro, sign up for classic. <laughs> Yes, sir. Real quickly, guys. So this is like the second time we've interviewed in like the last 10 minutes. And that's because <laughs> on the very first episode that we're recording, there was so much glitching that I had to pretend listen to Rudy here for a second. And um, <laughs> so bear with me, guys, on this. Uh, this is going to work. But Rudy, um, <laughs> I hate to say, hey, thanks again for being here. But this is uh, where we're at, man. <laughs> <laughs> how, how are you doing today, Rudy? Everything is good, man. Everything is good. I can't complain, man. Everything is good. I'm, I'm very blessed. Right, right. And um, uh, another thing, and I, I hate that I'm going to spoil this again because I that's how I started the first recording. But Rudy, I have to ask you, because of your name, because of us as athletes, I have to ask, have you seen the movie, Rudy? And if you have, what are your thoughts on it? I have seen the movie, Rudy, and uh, I, I thought it was a great movie. It was, I thought it was a great movie. Um, it just uh, it really showed um, what a person is capable of when they want it, when they set their mind to it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, oh, like really? he was just that dude, you know what I mean, that nobody believed in him, but he he believed in himself, and and look what he did, you know? So, yeah. And like I said, I got, I got called Rudy all through high school, all through <laughs> the chance uh, it just didn't stop <laughs> yeah i i gotta tell you it's like one of my favorite movies of all time and so obviously when i you know hey i'm gonna hit up my boy rudy i'm like oh i have to ask him this and, and of course you know i'm like oh i bet he never gets this question never is gonna get asked about this right and then i'd imagine you get annoyed by it like crazy um but definitely a, definitely a phenomenal movie um <laughs> 100%. Real quick, uh, so real quick, guys, for all of you guys that don't know Rudy, I met Rudy at the Florida Pro. Uh, I talked about in a previous episode where I had the opportunity to interview a bunch of people as well as provide a live stream. And Rudy here, what I love about Rudy in our interview, that it was so amazing, and I felt like I connected with you so well that in the middle of the interview, I actually gave him a big fat hug. <laughs> and then you know what i love about that too is i don't think i hit the record button so it erased that entire interview and i remember <laughs> sammy coming up getting so upset like and i was like oh my god i just did one of the best interviews here and i didn't even record it <laughs> and, <laughs> i but, remember that yeah <laughs> And but I I do want to want to bring it to because you you performed in two different classes and as two different tiers and what I mean by tiers you performed as an amateur and as a pro. Um, yes. Can you kind of go into that experience of what it was like to train for that competition, as well as kind of go over the experience of training for two different classes uh, as well. Um. Well, uh, for this for this show, um, you know, uh, we had a goal in mind of like definitely coming in because it's a national show, right? So we know that there's going to be some some good competition, and uh, we need to bring that like that that A package, right? Um, so you know, I just uh, like with the coach, you know, we really just like sat down, like really like. Uh, just worked on um, on the nutrition part, obviously, and uh, and different workouts uh, to definitely uh, bring out uh, and like get the striations in the muscles and stuff like that, as as well as like getting as lean as possible. Um, it was um it was it was pretty intense. Um, you know, um, my coach really uh, uh, his, his name is Mike uh, Mikey from uh, from Rare Breed. Um, so yes, um, uh, my hat my hat goes off to him. Uh, T, his wife, and the whole team. Um, yeah, man, he really pushed me on this one. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like I, um, I, at one point, I had a, a mental, almost a mental breakdown from, uh, you know, what I'm saying just, uh, you know, just the diet and the, just, you know, just uh, the intense uh, training. Um, I've never been pushed that hard, um, but you know what I mean, like. Um, with his guidance and uh and just <clears throat> talking to other people like uh i didn't give up obviously and um 
And um, and my whole goal of the of, of doing classic, I've always wanted to do classic. Um, mm-hmm. I've I've always loved it. You know what I'm saying? Like you know the 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 uh, the, the sea bomb. You know, I'm like I've always like I watched that and like I I want that stuff. <clears throat> and um. And like I've been like really like I'm very top heavy, uh, so like my mm-hmm. legs were always like uh, a very hard muscle for me to grow. Um, but um, like I've, I've, like I pounded them down and like I I made some like some significant uh, progress in them. And it just it just so happened like uh, four days out from the show, um, I just sent him a, a physique update. I was in my tidy whiteies, you know what I'm saying? I just like you know I flexed on him <laughs> and he and he looked at my legs and he was like, dude, sign up. I'm like, sign up for what? What are you talking about? He's like, bro, sign up for classic. He's like, you you can mm. do it. And I was like, damn. And I was like, you serious? And uh, he's like, bro, let's do it. I I, I hit up Daryl and I signed up three days out from the show. Oh, <laughs> and wow. um, yeah, uh, for the classic. And um, and uh, it was a, it was an amazing experience, man. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed uh being up there with all the all the other competitors. Um, and like I said, I, I had no expectations, you know, I just wanted to go up there mm-hmm. and, and get my feet wet and, uh, and just get that experience and just, uh, break yeah. that, you know, break the ice. Uh, uh-huh. but it was an amazing experience, man. And, and uh, I, that's, you know, uh, now, now we're really working on it so we can definitely bring a better package. Um, and uh, so we can do it again, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, first of all, <laughs> I have to say you took a picture in tidy whities uh, men at yeah. our age, that still can trust wearing tidy whities is a is accomplishment in and of itself. So congratulations <laughs> on having a pair of tidy whities and being confident enough to take a picture in them. Okay. Yeah, right. Uh, sec- second of all, I, I didn't know you, it was three days before. Like, could you? I, I can't imagine what that check-in photo is like when your coach is like, "Bro, them legs!" Like, and was that was that the differentiation that pushed you to? Well, that pushed him to tell you to do classic physique is like what your legs look like. Yeah, um, it's um, well, prior to that, like I, I did a check in with him, I went to his gym, and I like, you know, and I, I showed him my legs, and he's like, listen, to me, you know, like, they're coming along. So yeah, but that was right there. Just like, uh, it was the when he seen that he was like, listen, we can do it. And I was like, let's do it. So um, yeah, man, uh, it was it was awesome. It was awesome. I, I, I enjoyed every minute of it. Dude, I muted myself. I didn't even mean to do that. Oops. Um, yeah, I was wondering. I'm like, uh oh, we lost it again. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> yeah, no, three. that's like, yeah, only only if I could blame my Wi Fi. Like, no, that's me trying to adjust the software problem. <laughs> Damn it. This is so always. <laughs> no, so, oh, sorry. So, so the big bad of this, your legs look juicy. Um, I, I mean, look at all homo, no homo, whatever, dude. Your legs look, look freaking great. Like, I, I see your Instagram photos. And I, I love reading the inspiration uh, and to the point where I thought that that was the plan the whole time. So the fact that you did it three days before is pretty significant. And the fact that you could find black trunks that quickly that fit you like that, it kind of makes me wonder, are you, sh- <laughs> I mean, was it really three days before? <laughs> like, yeah, dude, no lie, man. I, once, once he, get, once he gave me the green light, I, bro, Amazon prime is the shit. <laughs> Amazon no prime. Lie, I found- man. Yeah, I found them on Amazon. They, next day, they were right right at my door. Good I actually man. bought two pair. I bought a, a a small and a medium just in case because I didn't want to just take the chance. You know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> and so, and which I did. Wait, which ones? And which ones fit? The the, the smalls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I was curious about that. I'm like, which one was it now, Rudy? <laughs> oh, oh, my man. God. You know, so, yeah. and then at that competition, too, you got to compete with your girlfriend, right? Um, I have your fiance. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, your fiance. Right, 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 it's right. Um, at least I wasn't like, that was the person you swiped right to, right? Like, no. Um, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> uh, but what was, what was that? preparation like what was being at the competition competing with her like can you kind of go over that experience as well yeah you know what i mean um you know we both we both compete you know and um you know uh every show we've done pretty much uh we've done together um you know what i mean from the beginning um you know it's it's funny because like uh like i i can i can prep for a show and she can't 
but it's not the opposite way around. Like if she wanted to do a show, like I, I have to be along with it. You know what I'm saying? Because if not, <laughs> like she, she can't do it, right? Um, and yeah, it's just funny like that because like you know, I, I, I guess you know she has discipline, but I have like I guess stronger discipline. Like you know what I mean? Like okay. So she, you know, she she saw like when she was diving, she was like, "Listen, if you're gonna go have a cheat meal, don't do it around me, because if not, we're gonna be fighting." You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know. But um, yeah, no, but like you know, what I'm saying like um, to be honest, like um, it goes pretty smooth. You know, what I'm saying it's good because like we're both on the same page. You know what I mean? And like um, and we both have our 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 times. You know what I mean? Like you know, like oh, she's like you know, she's like you know, like I can't do it no more, or like you know, I'm just like frustrated. You know, because you know how it is. You've done shows when you're dieting so much. You know, you get frustrated at a, at the drop of a hat. Like any everything oh, is just man, you're man. on edge with everything. You know what I mean? Like just hearing a voice, you're just like you cringe. You know, it's just like you know, Ed, a lot of things get to you. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so that's one thing I I liked about it is that like you know when she's like feeling like that, like I can you know talk her off the ledge or even the opposite opposite around you know what i'm saying like if i'm feeling like that like she'll talk i talk to her and i'm glad that we have the communication that you know what i'm saying that we can talk and like you know uh, you know help each other out with that you know like and, and just push each other and you know just be like hey this you know we're almost there we, we we can do this you know yeah yeah i can imagine that's going through that um suffering per se together mm -hmm. definitely mm -hmm. can bring you guys a lot closer together and it's also yes. funny. I hate this. I, I actually found this out recently because um, you talked about how you can do prep, but and she doesn't have to. But if she does prep, you have to because of all the cheat meals and whatnot. I found out very recently, um, and and I hope this is right. Still, someone's going to probably correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But women, because of their reaper, you know, their reproductive system and the fact that their body has to naturally innately take care of another human being that when they go through hunger issues, they're, they're actually hangrier than we are. They actually go through more yeah. pain than we do. But then that's another funny thing is women also, I think, inherently have a higher pain tolerance than men do. 100%. Yes. And, uh, and it's funny because so I didn't really believe that until um, I forgot which Olympics I watched. But they're running a marathon, and I, they literally play the men's, and then they play the women's running. Obviously, the times are different. But when you see the women get done with the marathon, they're just like, <sighs> okay, like just leave. Like they're just like, oh, this is the race yeah, yeah. done. And every yeah, single yeah. guy that that crossed the finish line just like, <gasps> <gasps> they're gasping, right? <laughs> right, right. And I forgot who I was talking to, but it, it was I was like, no, this is bullshit. This is all that whatever crap. And then literally like, look, and I just watch. I'm like, oh my god, it's true. <laughs> so, uh, so it's funny that you brought up that whole prep. Uh, and the whole nine yards. So, and, and how many competitions is this for you guys? Um, this is um, this is seven for me, six for her. Oh wow! So and so yes. you guys. So then you guys have competed six times together. Yes. Yes. Wow. Wow. Okay. And then I also want to talk because you said about Team Rare Breed. You talk about the coach. When I met you and i met everybody out there that was all team rare breed in the whole nine yards you you guys all had this family dynamic that i definitely gravitated towards i definitely started hanging out with all you guys more because of it can you kind of talk about what it's like to be part of team rare breed what it's like to work with coach mikey and uh can you just kind of go over that yeah um you know um i worked with another coach and, and, and everything was and it was good but just like you know, when you have, when you, if you have that chemistry with a coach, like it's cool, but like there was no really that chemistry. So I felt like there was lacking something. So when I reached out to Mikey and, uh, and like joined the team, like I just, before that, I just seen them and just like, <clears throat> like you said, you know, like, um, like I could see it. They're just like, they're just like one, you know what I'm saying? Like they're all together. You know what I'm saying? They, they're just, they support each other. They, you know, they got each other's backs. <clears throat> and, um, so when I joined, um, that's exactly what I felt like, you know what I'm saying? Um, he makes you feel at home. You know what I'm saying? He mm -hmm. makes you feel a part of, you know, um, uh, you know, every, all the whole team does, you know? And um, I don't know. I just, I, 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 I really like that. And I, you know, I, and just the whole, you know, the atmosphere with all of us, you know what I'm saying? It's just very, like you said, it's like, it's like a big family. It really is, you know? And, um, and like I said, you know, when, when we go to shows, like if one, one competitor is competing somewhere, like 
sent seven or eight team members they go and support and they're just cheering everybody on you know what i mean like i think that's awesome i think that's awesome because we yeah. all got our, got each other's backs and we all we all want to see each other uh do our best you know what i mean and mm -hmm. um I don't know. I just, I just, I really love being on that team. Uh, Mike, he's just, he's, he, he's, a, he's a workhorse, man. He's a, he's a freaking workhorse, man. He has a lot, a lot of clients. Uh, not only that, he opened up a gym. Uh, he does clients in the gym. Like I, I, I've, I've had some like really long talks. I, was, I don't know how he does it, uh, but he does it. He does it because he has a fucking passion for it. That's what it is. He has That's a passion awesome. for it, man. You know what I mean? And like, it just doesn't matter. Like, you know what I mean? Like, um, He'll do whatever it takes because he loves what he does. Yeah, yeah, dude. I I think that's what's so amazing about certain brands, about certain people that are a part of a, a group such as yourselves. All of it is a reflection of the person that's at center, you know, and, mm -hmm. and they're the ones that kind of manifest everything. And when you create that energy, that 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 atmosphere it, you only gra the people that are gravitated towards it are reflections of that same kind of energy so the fact that you guys are all together mm -hmm. all everything and what i love about it as well there's like no egos it doesn't feel like it at least mm -hmm. and it definitely feels like mm -hmm. like you just said because i remember when when every single time one of your guys's team members were on stage the rest of you were in the crowd cheering them on definitely rooting for them I know that our live stream was going live in the gym that you guys work out at, right? The rare breed mm -hmm. compound or so. Um, yeah. And, and so that's awesome. That's definitely um, huge. Like, would you, would you say that being part of that team has definitely um, helped you to where you're at now and it encourages you to still push for you to be better? 100%, 100%. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, um, you know, he, he believes in, he believes in his clients, you know what I mean? Like, you know, um, you know, um, you know, I always wanted to do, like I said, I wanted to do, always wanted to do classic, but I didn't really believe I can do it, but he believed that I can do it. Right. And like, he pushed me and he like designed the workouts so I could be able to like make my legs grow and like get that, get that definition that I needed. And like, if it wasn't for him, like pushing me like that and like, let me know, like, you can do it, you can do it. I probably would not have jumped on there. I probably would have been like, nah, you know what? I don't want to take that chance. But he believed in me, right? So it made me believe in myself. Nice. Nice. And um, so you said seven competitions. And it's interesting that you talked about, even with your seventh competition, that you kind of broke through a barrier or something that you didn't think you could break through, right? Mm -hmm. um, when, is, when, when was your very first competition? It was in 2001. It was the AMBF uh, Natural Pro-Am. In 2001? Yeah. No, sorry. 2021. Sorry. Okay. Ooh, there's a 20. There's a Yeah. Sorry about that. 2021. Right. 2021. So that's two years ago. Yes. And, and And I'm not trying to throw you under the bus, Rudy. How, how old are you? I am 47. 40s. Dude, you fucking look amazing for even being 27, let alone 47. <laughs> so... Thank you, no, man. no, it's funny because the first the first thought in my mind was a smart ass comment, which is, man, you don't look a day over forty six. You look great, right? <laughs> but I'm like, boo, I like you look fucking phenomenal. It doesn't even like that would be such a stupid backhanded compliment. Yeah, look at how great. Like, no, this dude's fucking ripped and everything. Um, so 2021, you did your very first competition. Can you can you kind of take us back into what got you into signing up for that competition? Okay, so, um, you know, uh, go back a little bit. Like, I've always wanted to compete. I've always, like, I was intrigued with bodybuilding. Like, I've always, like, was, you know, back in the day, I was looking at, like, flex magazines, uh, you know, uh, muscle mags, like, oh, that's all that good stuff. And, uh, um, and I always, like, damn, I would love to, like, do that, you know. Um, uh, but due to, like, you know, um, you know, my lifestyle, how I was living, obviously, I you know, I, I couldn't, couldn't see that, you know what I mean? Um, okay. uh, but, um, how I started was, um, I, you know, I was, I was 200, I was 210 pounds. I was, I was 210 pounds. I was overweight, wow. um, out of shape. I worked out, but knew nothing about nutrition, nothing like zilch. Like I'm Puerto Rican. Like we like to eat, you know what I'm saying? Like our, our, <laughs> our, our servings of rice is like enough to feed a family. That's one serving for one person. At least from my mom used to feed us. I'm like, that's what you're going to eat. And it was like a mound. So like, that's what I thought. Like, you know what I mean? And then like, uh, you know, so like I said, I, I was, I was 
overweight and um and uh so i i finally made a decision like you know what like i was sick to, sick of the way i was feeling and just like feeling like shit looking like shit um mm. so i hired my first uh my first online coach um and i lost over 60 pounds with this coach um and um it's funny right because like you know uh my fiance Jen was like, you know, like, hey, you know, you're going through all this dieting, you know what I'm saying? Like, you look phenomenal. Why don't you, like, you always talk about competing. Why don't you just go for it? I'm like, mm. and then once again, like, you just, I, the AIDS thing kicked in. I was like, I'm too old for that. I can't do it, you know? And she's like, come on, you can do it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? I, so I signed, I signed up. Um, and that was actually in, uh, right before COVID, to be honest, that's when I first signed up. That's, that's when I first signed up for uh, uh, the show, that show right there. And then, um, obviously COVID happened, everything got shut down, boom, whatever. So mm -hmm. I had to wait until the following year when they were, they, they allowed everything to, to reopen again and whatever. So anyway, yeah. So when I decided to really do the show, um, and then, uh, she came up to me actually and was like, Hey. Let me ask you a question. Like, do you mind if I do the show with you? I'm like, why not? Let's do it together. And that's how it all started. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it was awesome. So, uh, yeah, so I did that first show. Um, I signed up for uh, uh, Novice, right? Novice, right? And uh, and I signed up for the Open. And um, and uh, I, I took my Novice, took first in Novice, took uh, first oh, yeah. in my Open. And then I went to overall, and I got my pro card. That uh, and that that one that one day. Wow. What what yeah. was all right? So, I I feel like there's a lot of things that that are going on here, and I definitely want to dissect it. Um, yeah. Because one of the things that I preach about competing um, is that although you see the results on stage, everyone's individual journey to stage is so significantly different and 100 what it means to be up on stage what it means to get whatever place it is is so different for everyone else for you can you kind of go into what that meant for you to finally get up on stage to win um and can you kind of go into like what that experience was like for you so you know for me uh, you know like i i didn't like I said I, I try not to go with expectations on things. Um, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like so I just I, I was just happy enough that you know what I, I had the courage to get on that stage, right? Um yes. and um <clears throat> you know it was uh like I said, you know, going through all that, it was an amazing an amazing experience. Um and then, you know, when uh they did the call outs and uh, I hear, you know, fifth, fourth, and I'm still on that line, I'm like Oh my God, is this really gonna like happen right now? And uh, they got down to me and the other the other competitor, and then they they called him, and then so I I just I was just I just was like wow I couldn't believe it, and uh, it just felt so damn good, you know what I'm saying that you know um, that I was able to accomplish something like that, um, you know because um, like you know because of my back history, you know what I'm saying I you know uh, it just. I thought none of the, none of this was possible, but it's um, you know, it was an amazing experience. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I when I went to the open, it, same thing. It just went down the whole line, and uh, it was it was just, you know, like you know, I for me, you know, like I always like doubt my I always doubt myself on things, and like uh, we are capable of doing anything that we set our minds to. You know what I mean? And um, that right there is just like that was like a big thing for me like that was a big big accomplishment for me uh that right. i was able to get on that stage and then place where i placed so it was it was just a beautiful thing right right and i, I don't want to get into this too because like you said you when you put your mind on something it's amazing what you can accomplish and i know for you you have one hell of a path to even get to that point um to give light to what that meant, especially for you in that moment. Can you, um, can you kind of talk about like your upbringing? Can you, can you kind of go into some of those things as well? Uh, cause I, I definitely think it's a very, very privy thing that people need to kind of hear. Sure. Sure. So, you know, um, <clears throat> you know, my upbringing, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, good family, you know, um, but, um, you know, I, um, uh, I ventured off in, in a path that, is very self-destructing, you know what I mean? And it's all because of like uh, not believing in myself, self-doubting myself, the negative talking to myself. So I ended up 
you know, uh, getting into drugs. Um, I started doing drugs at the age of 16. Uh, by 17, I was a full-blown heroin addict. Uh, <clears throat> you know what I mean? Uh, it's funny. I say I say this and like joking when I like when I talk at uh, uh, facilities because I go sometimes I go to rehab facilities and I talk to adolescents yeah. and I do all these things because uh, it helps me and I want to help them. But I always say mm -hmm. this. I say, you know, I got <clears throat> I got my high school diploma in weed. I got my college degree in cocaine. I got my master's in heroin. Like that's what that's, you know what I mean? Like that, that's how fast my disease, you know, um, you know, progressed, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So by the age of 17, uh, I was a full blown heroin addict, um, you know, in and out of jail, um, you know, st stealing from my family, the, the, the first, the, the, the people that are closer to me, uh, all because mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, my addiction, you know what I mean? It's not me. It's just when, when you're in the grips of that type of, uh, uh, when you're in the grips of that, it's it it, it it you do things that you normally wouldn't be doing. You know what I mean? And um, yeah. so you know, uh, fast forward, you know, um, you know, I struggled with uh, drug addiction for twenty plus years. You know what I mean? Um, so you know, uh, I've had some spurts of uh, of you know abstinence, let's call it, you know, and uh, but I always revert it right back to um, the using again. You know. Um, mm -hmm. And um, it took me down a really dark path, man. It really did. Um, I ended up in prison. I did five years down prison. Uh, I came home. Uh, this was in 2004, uh, selling drugs to maintain my habit. Um, and I don't say this for glorifying. It's just it's just my story. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, so, like I said, you know, um, I ended up in, in prison, uh, and I, I came home after five years. And uh, you would think that, you know, hey, if, my, well, my family thought like, oh, he, this is really, this is what's going to wake him up. Um, and it didn't, it didn't, it didn't. Mm. Cause like when I got out, uh, I went right back to doing the same thing again. And I went back to prison again for two more years. You know what I mean? Uh, so, um, and then, uh, you know, eventually uh, I found myself homeless, I found myself homeless on the streets, uh, begging for money, um, uh, finding a way to find food. Uh, I literally ate out of garbage cans. Literally ate out of wow. garbage cans, um, you know, sleeping in, in a, uh, broken down homes that are abandoned, you know, oh. <clears throat> uh, you know, not showering, you know, it just living really, 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 I just, I was a shell of a body, you know, a shell of a human. Um, and to the point of, you know, uh, before I got clean, um, you know, uh, I got clean in 2016, uh, but before that, right before that, all that happened, uh, where before I made that decision, um, yeah, I I try to take myself out. I try to I try to um, take myself out, and uh, and uh, I, I I it just it wasn't it wasn't in my it wasn't in my plan. Let's just say that, you know what I mean. Um, so, you know, I got clean in 2016, and um, and uh, I just you know I just you know, started chasing the road of recovery, you know, uh, and just, you know, I learned a lot from myself, you know what I'm saying? I learned how, what Rudy, how Rudy ticks and, um, and I worked on myself, right? Um, because, you know, you know, as we talk about this in, in, in meetings, right? And, uh, you know, um, the drugs is just a symptom, you know what I mean? Uh, the problem is me. Right mm. between my ears, my brain, my thinking, the way I think, that's that's what's skewed, right? Um, and uh, but like I said, through you know being around other addicts that live my life and understand me, right? Um, I learned a lot, and I've learned tools on how to deal with certain things and uh, how to deal with life in general. Uh, you know, um, it's it's crazy because like you know. Uh, you know, I, I, I say this all the time, like, you know, like if I'm sitting at the dinner table around my family and uh, like, and I sit to say, you know, oh man, you know, I feel like getting high today. They're going to look at me, like, they're going to look at me like I'm crazy. You know, I'm like, what, what are you talking about? You can't do that. Right. But like, if I sit there and I tell another addict and I say, hey man, you know, I'm getting these feelings like I want to use, they understand. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Because they've been there. So like, you know, like, you know, we always say that one add a cup and another, and that's, and that's what we do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah. Um, and, uh, that's, that's what happened. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, man, you know, I, yeah, I always say this as well too. Like, 
you know, it didn't have to be this way. You know what I'm saying? Because, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the way I was living, I shouldn't be here. Um, um, you know, uh, so many people that I grew up with and, uh, and so this, to this day, you know, they're, they're passing away. They're, you know, saying the OD and, and, and whatnot. And, uh, and I, you know, I remember when, you know, uh, when I was out there and I used to hear people like, you know, you know, OD and I used to, I, cause I, I wanted not to, I didn't want to be on this earth. And I'm like, why not me? Why not me? Why, why, why mm. am I being here? Why am I still suffering the way I'm suffering? Uh, but you know what, man, you know, I would not take anything back for what I've been through because it made me the man that I am today. Amen to that. Amen to that. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to get here real quick because I, I, I want people to understand where people are coming from when they do these things. Right. Because it's really easy for us to just say we're addicts or we're on this or we're on that. And I know that comes with a lot of care, like a a lot of narratives, a lot of stereotypes, a lot Mm -hmm. of misappropriating their character and kind of what you just said. It's a shell of who the hell you are when you're going through that. Um, Mm -hmm. Can you can you kind of describe what that feeling is like that shell of yourself? I mean, I I have a way of explaining it and I might piggyback onto what you say. But but in your words, can you talk about what that means for you? Um, the reason I, I felt empty, I felt mm. empty, like, uh, you know, like there was a void that I was trying to fill, Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Fill within myself with external stuff like drugs. And, and if it, it doesn't have to be, it, it was like buying things, this and that. And that's something that can't be filled with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I know like the whole God thing, a lot of people is different, but like, you know what I'm saying? I believe in a higher power and I know that, you know, there's something, right, that is looking over me and that wants me to do the right thing, right? Mm-hmm. And like by me having that conscious contact with a higher power, that's what fills that void. And that's mm-hmm. what brings me happiness and I feel like whole. You know what I'm saying? I felt empty. Like I just didn't, like I, like, I was just very empty. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because, oh man, I, I love how you described it. It's a void that can't be filled with anything, but we always get into that moment where we try to fill that void with something because it kind of brings like an emotional rise because what we're mm-hmm. actually have a void in is something within our emotions that isn't corresponding correctly, whether it's we're, exactly. we're emotional about a certain situation, emotional about ourselves. It's some kind of an emotion that can't be filled and, drugs alcohol this feeling of not actually being present with your body is like this high is sometimes just what you need so you can disconnect and actually feel numb from it Mm -hmm. um and yeah i you know because like i remember for me when i was in vegas when i lived in vegas i lived that vegas life not going to go into specifics too much about things but i definitely lived a very extreme nightlife right um but i remember if i were to really look at it it's kind of what you just described now i was filling a void I definitely didn't feel secure with myself. Like if I wanted to talk Mm -hmm. to someone, I felt like I had to be a different version of myself because something was telling me intrinsically that I'm not good enough. And I didn't know about that until years later. And um, it's very interesting now that I meet people like you who have similar back. I'm not going to, I'm not going to say I went through, went through because you definitely had a very challenging, interesting time, but definitely it's like the same path where it's like, we're on this path, not thinking we're enough. So we're doing a lot of self-destructive things. Then we have this something that kind of wakes us up. Like, Holy shit, I'm here for a real reason. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of like take that transcendence. You, you spoke real, you spoke a little bit about all of a sudden getting yourself clean in 2016. And, but you kind of, were talking about eating out of garbage cans. You weren't thinking highly of yourself. You we're trying to off yourself, so to speak. What mm-hmm. moment was it for you where you're like, holy shit, I'm going to make this change? Okay. Um, that pivotal, that, that moment of clarity that I had, that's what I call it, a moment of clarity, clarity right? Um, mm-hmm. I was once again uh, sitting in a six by nine cell, right? Sick as a dog, right? And, and I'm sitting there in the cell and I just was like, I just... I don't know. I just like, I just took this good look at myself and said, Rudy, like, what the fuck are we going to do, man? Like, come on, bro. Like, you're 40 years old. 
Like, do you, like, you know what I mean? Like I had this long and like this, the moment of clarity that I had, it was, I, I call it um, a, 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 an awakening, right? Because like, I just felt this sense of peace that flowed mm. over me. And this, and like, I just heard this, like this inner voice saying, you're going to be okay. And that's when I was like, I'm going to do this. Man. I'm going to do this. Like I, I'm gonna, I, I was always afraid that, you know what I'm saying? I was always afraid of like, what's going to happen. I was always afraid of like change because <clears throat> that's all I knew. I didn't know how to live as a productive member of society. I didn't know how to live. I see people going to work. I'm like, how do they do that? Like, I don't know, what, how do they, how do they go to work in the morning? Like, you know what I mean? So to me, that moment of clarity and that, you know, that, 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 that aha moment was when, once again, like I said, I was sitting in a six by nine cell, sick as a dog, puking, just withdrawing from the drugs. And I just like had that talk with myself. And that's when I felt that, that feeling. And I knew that I was going to be safe and I was going to be okay. And, um, and from there, um, I just, I chased my recovery. Like I, like I always tell the, the youngsters when I see them, I chased my recovery, just like I chased my drugs. Wow. The same way, the same way, the same way. I did anything and anything possible to get the next one. So I have to do anything and anything impossible so I can stay clean one more day. Wow. And so I'm, I'm imagining then, like, like, for example, like this last competition where you just you kind of broke through another barrier of what you thought you were going to plateau at. And once mm-hmm. you kind of break through, that's kind of like this other. Would you say that that's an example of what you're talking about chasing your recovery? Damn right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, I, 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 I put recovery and fitness hand in hand, right? You know, I, I really do. I really do because, you know, I've learned a lot uh, through my recovery. Uh, but at the same time, you know, through fitness, I've learned a lot as well as myself that it lets me know that, you know, I, like you just, we just talked, like I can, I can do anything I set my mind to. You know what I'm saying? There's, there, there is no, there's no, there's no ceiling. There's no cap. There's, there is no cap. The only cap that there is is the one that we put ourselves at. That's it. Mm. When we sit there, when we sit there and say, "This is it. This is, this is all." all I, I can't do that. Now we're just believing the bullshit that we're telling ourselves, so we're not going to attempt to do it, right? So, how are you not going to know if you don't try, right? So, I, 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 I go with, I, I do. I, listen, like. I had nothing, like nothing. Like I had freaking a book bag with some dirty ass clothes inside of it. You know what I mean? Like, and like, you know, I cherish everything that I have, everything. Like I'm grateful, very grateful for everything I have in my life. I'm grateful for the things that I don't have in my life. Right. And, um, you know, like I, I wake up in the morning, like, it's funny. Like I, I go to work and like, I'm all happy. And they're like, really, why are you so damn happy? And in my head, you know what I say to myself? Like, only if you know. Mm. only if you know because mm. you know what i mean like a lot of people don't don't you know don't know my story you know they they they, they never seen me when i was like that so they just oh man you're just a happy dude man you're like yeah damn right man because life is life is listen life is precious and it's beautiful and you know we're only here on borrowed time man we're here on borrowed time you know what i'm saying so we have to you know at least for me i need to make the best of it you know what i'm saying because i wasted you know, and I blew 20 years of my life, you know, uh, doing something that was, you know, uh, not conducive to my life at all. Yeah. Yeah, man. There's a, that reminds me of a quote. Um, the quote's like the two most important days in a man's life is the day that he's born and the day that he finds out why. Um, mm. and it's, it's really interesting because <laughs> it, it seems like had it not been for the things that you had gone through just not too long ago and, and previously had you not gone through that adversity had you not gone through being at the lowest of lows that you wouldn't be able to appreciate where you're at now would that be accurate 100 percent, 100 percent. and 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 that's honestly <clears throat> I, I gotta tell you man it, it, i feel like uh, first there's a lot of layers to pull this oh, fuck. you open the you open the book where well uh, uh, uh was it a bookworm or a book bag of just shit now I'm, i can't wait to talk about these things <laughs> um the first the first is definitely the they're working out, you know, um, 
and the lifting and, and definitely signing up for competitions. Like for me, I've always told people that if they're going through anything, finances, whether they're going through a breakup, they're going through body issues, they're going through anything, work out and sign up for a competition, especially if you've never done one. And like, mm-hmm. what? I don't care. I don't, what do I need for a body? Well, I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not the thing. That's like working out isn't the physical thing I'm trying to tell. But now, mind you, you're going to have right. a, a good, a good <laughs> result of, of looking better by default. But when you start working out and you're going through these things, like you, A, learn how to prioritize yourself. You learn mm-hmm. how to eat better. You learn how to go for a higher version of yourself. And all of these attributes are monumental for creating a foundation of transformation of, of creating a, a, a newer version of you. And so I love the fact that you brought that up because you didn't, you didn't even say anything about, Oh, working out, look at my biceps, look at my arms. Like, no, no, no. I am prioritizing myself. I'm creating a better version of myself. And that yes, intrinsic sir. value is what matters more than anything else. And that's why I love that you piggyback this off of your self doubt, self belief, because so many people, just like like you just said like i can't do it yeah you just prove to yourself that you can't because now if you believe that you can't mm-hmm. you're going to find every reason to <laughs> prove that to be right and then you're mm-hmm. not going to be a version of yourself and i honestly feel like a lot of people are depressed because they have all of these big lofty goals but they don't actually believe they can attain them and so therefore exactly. like they kind of keep themselves at so that's another reason why i tell people to compete is because once you get up on stage, like you said, the courage, the whole, the whole nine yards, you're like, Hey, I actually could do this. I just, it was me this whole time. Mm-hmm. And I, I, what's really interesting too, is you started talking about like, Hey, you tell other, like, so what's been your experience, like sharing your story with youth? Like you, do you say, like, do you visit correction centers? Do you visit like drug rehab centers? Like what are the places that you speak? <laughs> yeah. Um, I have, I, uh, you know, I get asked to speak at like uh, detox centers, uh, detoxes, rehabs. Um, you know, I, I speak, uh, different, uh, uh, meetings as well. Um, um, yeah. So like, you know, um, you know, I, I go there and like, you know, they ask me, right. And, you know, so I give my experience, strength and hope. Right. Because, you know, when, when we're, when we're stuck in that, in that, in that dark spot, right? Like, um, at least for me, I, I felt that. And, and usually when I, I, you know, I talk to these youngsters or even anybody else, they feel the same way. We feel hopeless. Like, like there's no hope for us. Like this is what it is, you know, but like <clears throat> when, you know, you have somebody that's been through the trenches like you, right. And been there and look where they're at. And it just gives you that sense of hope. Like, damn, man, like if this guy could freaking do it, like, I probably got a freaking shot, man. I think if I try, right, I think I can do it. You know yeah. what I mean? And and that's why we, uh, you know, I, we say we 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 give back what was so gr- feel, freely given back given to us. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, we we give we get we can't keep what we have without giving it away. Makes sense. You know what I'm saying? So like the gift that was given to me, I have to give it away. It's not for me to keep. You know what I mean? Yeah. The message of hope. The message that. We do recover. We can change. You know what I mean? That's why I'm very, you know, uh, you know, you see it on my Instagram. Like I talk about, I, listen, I'm an open damn book, like straight up, like there's, you know, I'm transparent as transparent can be. You know what I mean? I talk about it. You know what I'm saying? I, I've, and like, you know, and I've gotten so many messages from people, you know, uh, from everywhere, you know, like, oh my God, like that post touched me. Like, oh my God, like my son, like they open up people that I don't even know. Like, you know, I've never really talked about this, but my son is going through this problem. And like, I I would love for him to talk to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like things like that, you know what I mean? It's, and that's, and that's, and that's why I'm, you know, I, I, I do what I do. Like, you know, I talk about fitness on my page a lot too, as well. But at the same time, I talk about change, you know what I mean? Because there could be somebody, right? Sitting on Instagram in their dark ass room, right? Wishing they were they could freaking just die and they're just scrolling because they don't know what to do no more. And all of a sudden they run into my fucking page. And all of a sudden they hear me speak and they're like, Holy shit. You know what I mean? If I could you know what I mean? It's the best feeling 
I've gotten is when I go somewhere and like I talk to a, a bunch of youngsters or a, a, a detox center, and then when I see them later on, and then like, hey, Voodoo, you remember me? I'm like, oh yeah. I'm like, damn man, like, remember you know when you went to the meeting and like you know you talked, man. I've been clean ever since because of that. Hell yeah, dude. That's a rush and a half. I always say that's the be- that's better than any drug I've ever touched in my life. Just knowing that yeah. I'm able to impact somebody's life like that, right? And then you yeah. know them getting like I say, if I can, if 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 I get a room of ten people and I could save one person, my job is done. Yeah, yeah. I I I appreciate that you said that too because I feel like today's day and age we're so obsessed with how many followers, how many views, but. Mm-hmm. The quality of that should be, it's not the, how many views can you get into one piece of inspiration? Like how much inspiration can you provide in this one piece or in this one everything? And that is the one thing I do appreciate about being on your social media page is the things that you say you could tell are purely from the heart. They're not, they're not trying, you know, they're not like this, this inspirational package. And at the end, Hey, uh, add code Rudy for the supplement package for 15% off. Like, Oh, fuck, <laughs> you're selling me something, you know, like you could tell like your, your impact and you, what you value is, is just that. Um, all right. So like, let's say one of my listeners right now is definitely going through something that you were going through, like maybe like a 20 year younger version of you. What, what are some of the things that you would tell that person um, to kind of change their shit around. Well, the first thing I would definitely tell them is that they're not alone. They're not alone. Because mm-hmm. sometimes we feel we're alone. We're like, we're the only ones going through this kind of shit, right? Um, we're not unique. You know, there's there's so many other people out there, just, you know, that are going through the same situation, right? And that there is hope. You know what I mean? Like, you know, um, you know, there's so many resources out there uh, uh, to get help. You know, and that, you know, yeah. tell them like, you know, like, you know, you know, I always tell people, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm, you know, it's funny. Like Jen, Jen will say like, you tell everybody I love them. Like, I love you. It's, and, and you know why? Because it's unconditional, right? Because sometimes we need to hear that. We need to hear mm-hmm. that. To, you know what I'm saying? To let somebody know like, Hey man, you know, I love you, man. You know, it's, you know what I mean? Cause sometimes that goes a long way. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, at least for me, like, I, I never got that. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, like, I did get it, but then I, I, it stopped. And, like, all I wanted to do was just be loved. I just wanted to be, you know, you know? And, like, and that's what I do. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I would tell that person. Like, you know what? You're not alone, and I'm here for you, and I love you, man. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting when when you I, – I, I, for me, when I see younger versions, oh, all right. So, for example, when I see a younger version of myself, like ten years ago, fifteen years ago, and I really think about like what what triggered me to be really just ridiculously outgoing or do something extreme or go grab a drink or do whatever. You're right. It's a lack there of love and a lack there of being or feeling that I was even worthy of it. Mm-hmm. And 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 it's just like. And here's the thing. I, I want to add to that alone thing because y- you aren't alone, but you also can be alone. And also there's nothing wrong with being alone. There's nothing wrong mm-hmm. with just being by yourself and sitting in there. And, and because I feel like if you're not comfortable with yourself, you can't really expect anybody else to be comfortable with you as well. And mm-hmm. I feel like that's kind of where we need to start a, a lot of where we start. Like if, what is it that's making me feel so alone? What is it that's making me feel like I'm not worthy and work through it? Because here's a harsh reality. Life happens to all of us. It really does. 100%. But being a victim of that circumstance is a, is a choice. And if you could sit there and realize I'm in a really shitty situation, you have two choices. Take that head on, work through it, and figure out what makes that situation shitty and change it. Or... Mm-hmm regress to the mean and just constantly default into staying in your own ways, which a lot of times is destructive or eventually is destructive. And so I, I I always wonder though, like what did I, I, cause I don't feel like it always has to take something of your scenario or something of my scenario for people to get there. But it seems like it almost always happens that way where people go through something so extreme repeatedly. And then all of a sudden they have this huge breakthrough and that's what actually, you know, Um, And so that's actually why, too, I hate to say enjoy, 
But I appreciate that adversity happens and adversity happens to all of us because a lot, what you just said, you're not alone. You're not unique. You know, like, yeah, this girlfriend broke up with you. Yeah. She's the only girl that broke up with you or blah, 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 blah. But it's Mm -hmm. like, come on, all of us have, you know? And, Mm -hmm. and one of the things that I used to like, you know, I remember for me when I was, um, when I was in the Navy and I get back, like I went on deployment, I went on this, I went on that, blah, 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 blah. But it's like, you don't have to be deployed to feel isolated from the world. Like you could be present in every single day, but still feel gone. 100%. But those are those moments where we got to learn from, you know, whatever. But it's funny that you mentioned that. Cause I remember <laughs> being in that time, like, Oh, I'm poor me, poor this, poor that. Oh yeah. I played the victim and role. then, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, the victim role. I always wondered, it's, it's so popular. I, you know, it's funny. Cause I was just talking to my mom about this, um, which I don't understand where people, love being a victim yeah I, I don't know if you do you notice that at all 100 percent. i do what's your take on that what's your take on that? i'm curious you know me at least from my experience right from me uh-huh. um, um i played the victim role because i didn't want to look at myself i didn't want to look at the, my me you know what i'm saying like you know i was running from me but the problem is you can't run from yourself wherever you go you have you you know what i mean so i always played the victim role oh it's it's uh, my mom didn't love me enough. That's the reason why I was like this. Um, you know, this, this, and that, blah, 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 whatever the case may be. You know what I mean? Because we don't want to, we don't want to take a real harsh look at ourselves and mm. what we're doing. Right. So we always want to point the finger at everything else. It's everybody else's fault. The reason why we're like this, when we're not looking at yeah. the real, the real person is it's ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I wonder though, like, I want I, so this is my curiosity. Like, I wonder if that's a default. Like, I wonder if we're programmed to be a victim or programmed to, you know, because I yeah, I, yeah, I hate yeah. to say, it, but I see it more often than not. Um, and, and I know, for example, like it's a. This is what I heard too. Again, you, people can fact check me all they want on this one, but it's a survival tactic that where we are drawn to look at the negativity because we're drawn mm-hmm. to survive. We're drawn to constantly mm-hmm. patchwork and things like better. So. It's it, it, it's a uh, it's a change when we start looking on the positive on the positive things and constantly look at it. And what's interesting too is like for example, um, I, I I posted a five mile run at the beach uh, last week, right? And I remember I got a couple of DMs like, "Oh, cool, that's whatever." And I had one comment in in particular. He goes, "Must be <laughs> nice to be able to do that. Must be nice to do this, you know." And I remember sitting there, I'm like. Just because I I regularly run and just because I do this, it does not mean that it's not challenging still. Because I'll tell you, because I ran at Huntington Beach, it's an hour away, and then I had to bring my shower stuff because I have to go to work afterwards. And every single step of the way, I'm sitting there like, fuck me. Why am I doing this? Fuck this. Fuck that. Fuck this. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. But I got to constantly remind myself, that is just your fucking bitch-ass mind being a bitch and you need to fucking get over it. And the only way to get over it is be like, hey, you're being a bitch. You can either mm-hmm. stay in this bitchness or go through it. And exactly. even when I work out, even even when I hit the, the alarm to work out, and I know you're you're an early riser as well. Mm-hmm. Like, I could not tell you how big that snooze button looks every fucking morning. <laughs> but it's like, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, I could, I, I could I take this off. I could push this to the afternoon. But it's constantly making that choice every <laughs> single day. And it's funny because you don't really get over that bitch mindset. You just get used to it and learn mm-hmm. how to overcome it. And, exactly. and I honestly feel for me, like my self-confidence developed be, uh, for, for one of the many reasons. But one of the main ones is a understanding I have an inner bitch <laughs> and, it, and it exists <laughs> and, I, and it constantly makes me want to quit. But going against that innate response every single time is what definitely brings a lot of self-awareness brings a lot of self-calm and i think it's it's you know it's a transformation isn't exactly you get abs and you're someone abs like no you're a person that understands that there's a discipline that goes along with everything that we do Mm -hmm. and yeah it's not about becoming superhuman it's actually being aware that we are human but still choosing otherwise you know exactly you know i i feel i feel like you know like you just said you know saying like uh you know a lot of people think that working out is always a physical thing you know yeah that's that's a part of it yes um but like you just said it's a lot it's a lot deeper than that man 
It's a lot deeper than that. You know, um, you know, it, it's, it's made me a better person. It's made me, you know, like, I, I, like you said, I, uh, I learned how to, you know, like be regimented, like discipline, you know, like all these things, you know, and all because of fitness, it has spewed in all areas of my life. Yes. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Yes. It's not just, you know, people like, oh, well, yeah, you, you, you know, you work out, you just get asked. Yeah, that's great. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, that the results are going to come, like you said, but there's so much more, you know? Yeah. To me, it, to me, to me, fitness is, it's a spiritual, mental, and physical thing. That's what I believe. You know what I'm saying? Because, mm -hmm. like you said, you know, like, you know, all these things that, you know, we go through during the day or whatever the case may be. Like, when I go into the gym, I unplug from the world. I literally, I put my music on, I put my, my music on, and it's just me and the weights. That's it. Oh. Like, I sit here, and, I, and like you said, you know what I'm saying? Like, our brain will tell us, you know? Like, you know, uh, you've got 10 reps, and then your brain's like, it, it's it's because it's built for comfortability. It tells you no more. Mm. You, you don't, and that's it. You, don't, you can't do no one more, but that's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Because then we're like, no, you can do it. You can do it. Like I said, I, I have an inner bitch too. I tell, I, tell, <laughs> I, I, tell that, I tell I tell that bitch to shut the fuck up and sit in the back seat sometimes. Like, you know, don't, don't listen. <laughs> I'm driving right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. like, you know, like our, our brains, like you said, are built, right, for comfortability. It doesn't like to be uncomfortable. Right, you know, and like the snooze, like you said, the snooze button thing, you know, like the, you know, you know what's crazy, right? Like, uh, like it, I gotten better. Like I now, I am so like on point that I actually beat my alarm. I I wake up no alarm needed. Like that's impressive. Literally, you know nice. what I'm saying. But I train myself, right? I train myself, you know, and like it's crazy, right? There's a um. Oh, I forget what motivational speaker. I think it's a. Uh, oh man, I forget what her name is. Anyway, the point is, she says that when you wake up, right, you have a five second window before your brain kicks in. So, what she would say, because like, think about it. How many times have you had this? The alarm goes off, and you sit there like, damn, and this pillow feels damn good. I don't want to get up yet, <laughs> right? So, what she would say is, when the alarm goes off. Count backwards, five, four, three, two, one, and just get the fuck up. Mm. And I thought that then, and it fucking works. When the alarm used to go off, I go five, four, three, two, one, and just get, and just and just and spring up. I don't let I don't let my brain kick in to tell me, damn, that pillow and that freaking blanket feels very, very warm right now. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that's that's what works for me. You know what I mean? It's crazy. I took that. I sounded as stupid as it sound. I was like, you know, let me try that shit. You know, and Oh, it freaking yeah. works, man! It works. It's crazy. It's, it works. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Yeah, for for me, I uh, I now have a genuine fear if I miss a workout, a fear, fear and I lose my fucking <laughs> mind. Like like for example, like let's. I, I've definitely had a few mornings, uh, probably like once or twice a month. I'll I'll hit the snooze, and then I realize I actually hit the off button, and then I didn't hit the snooze at all. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to snooze. I'm like, why is it sunlight out? Fuck! You know? And, and, then, I'm, and then I can't – then I got to go to work, and I didn't get a workout. Like, let's say it's a legs day, right? And I'm just, like, sitting there at work, like, fuck, when I'm going to hit this fucking gym. Like, I don't even fucking know what I'm doing. Like, it's terrible. But it's at that point. Um, but you're right, though. Like, you just have to get the fuck over it. And and here's another thing too that's really interesting is like so our circadian rhythms and how far when we get into REM sleep is really crucial. And so like because our REM I think our REM cycles are anywhere between like three hours or or some some interval of that dynamic. If you hit snooze and you go back into sleep for like 10 minutes and you hit a small part of that REM and you wake yourself out of it because of that 10 minute interval you end up becoming more tired for the rest of the day because you just fucked your entire circadian rhythm. Yeah, that's how and uh yeah, no, and it and it does, and and so it's so many interesting things about when you do decide to wake up early. Um, not only the sleep patterns, but also when you think about it too, when you work out first thing in the morning, like you're investing into yourself, you're prioritizing yourself, yes, and you're accomplishing that. You know, and, and that little dopamine hit or a lot of dopamine hit, and you carry that on through the rest of the day. It brings about that confidence. It brings about that sense of accomplishment. And when you have someone who's energetically feeling accomplished and feeling confident, 
just everything that they do for the rest of the day exhibits that kind of energy and people are drawn to that energy. 100%. And so what you talked about earlier was really important where you said like, you know, people think it's all about the, about the physique, the physical attributes. They are that, but usually those attributes are associated with confidence, with accomplishment or something like, because what you just said, right? Getting to that level is more than just the physical. It's everything else that accompanies that. And it's mm -hmm. like, how can you not feel accomplished as a human being when you're at that level of fitness, when you're at that level of self-prioritization? And so it's really interesting because people attribute that confidence because of the look, not realizing that look is actually the byproduct of that confidence and that byproduct mm -hmm. of that self-investment. And so it's when I, I think more people need to realize that it's not about the physique. It's about becoming that person first. The physique is just a result of that person's intrinsic value to invest into That's themselves. Right. That's right. And so um, I'm going to get off my, my pedestal now for that one, but uh, <laughs> for that soapbox, I guess for that. That was good. That that was, was good. That was, I, I like, yeah, no, no, I'm going to, I'm going to mark. So I'm going to mark. I'm going to save that clip. Yes. I'm going to save that. Yes. Clip. yes. Um, but, uh, <laughs> um, but it definitely is. Um, all right. So Rudy, what are your, uh, you said you're done doing physique, right? And now you're just going to continue doing classic physique. Um, mm -hmm. When's your next show? Um, so right now, um, what I'm going to be, the, the whole goal that we have set and plan is uh, I want to take a whole full year off. Um, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Off season, nice, uh, a nice full year uh, to really like uh, – go through this um you know this growing phase you know uh, the, the the transformation phase so we can put more, uh, more size um <clears throat> as well as you know a clean bulk you know what i'm saying not get sloppy obviously okay. um but yeah definitely um uh, just really try to like um put as much muscle as possible through the year uh don't have anything in line yet um but um when we start getting closer uh that's when i'll probably sit down with the coach and kind of like you know, like map out, you know, everything, uh, you know, how we're going to go about for the next one. I'm, 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 to be honest, I'm already putting money aside, uh, every week. Uh, you know what I mean? So I have, so when it's time to pull the trigger, all the money's there for it. So I don't have to worry about like, you know, like, uh, you know, trying to get it or whatever, like, you know, I like it's, it's, I'm, it's, it's going to happen. Um, but yeah, so like right now, like I've always, it's crazy. Cause like, I, you know, I, I love, I love fitness and I love competing. I, once you get, once you get up on that stage, you have that itch and you just like, you just love it. Um, at least for me, it, it was like that. Um, and like, I found myself that, you know, like I would do a couple shows and then like, I'll be like, all right, I'm going to take a break. And then I would, you know, be like, it'd be like three months in and then I go to a show and I see the guys and everybody competing and I'm like, oh, I want to get back up there, you know? <laughs> and then, so, and then I pull the trigger and I do it. So this time I committed myself this time for real, uh, to really, um, give myself that, 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 that time, uh, one for the body to heal. Uh, and so I could be able to grow because, you know, if you're always, you know, jumping back and forth into shows and you're, and you're in that deficit, you're not, you're not going to gain any muscle. You just, you know, you're just maintaining what you have. And uh -huh. I want to be a better version, uh, and a bigger version of what I brought, uh, in Florida. Even thicker thighs is That's what right. you want. That's right. Thick. <laughs> That's right. Every, that's right. Every time I hear that word, have you seen that uh, Donald Trump meme where he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't unsee that. I can't unsee that to save my goddamn life, no matter what. That's great. Oh, my God. Um, all right, Rudy, for, uh, for my listeners and for everybody else, uh, Instagram handle, anything like that, that you, uh, want to put out there so people can follow you. Yeah, man, definitely, man. Um, yeah, you can check me out on my Instagram. Uh, it's uh, J A N D R fitness underscore, uh, or on Facebook, uh, you can just find us, uh, Jen Rudy. You can find us on theirs too. Um, that's both of our page. Um, I'm here to help any questions, uh, anybody struggling, don't feel ashamed and like, like reach out i'm i'm here to help um yeah uh, i would love to you know help anybody that needs help because uh it helps me absolutely absolutely all right rudy well thank you so much for uh being on here and 
dude, I'm so happy that it's actually just recorded all the way through, given what we were experiencing for the it first was, 20 minutes. It was per- perfect. It came out perfect. It was great. Right? Um, I, I Alan, Alan I, I really do want to say this to as, as well. I want to thank you uh, for the opportunity and for you asking me uh, to be on your podcast because uh, to me, it's an honor, right? Um, I think that you're an amazing dude. Uh, you know, like, like you said, when we met, uh, I, bro, we clicked and it was cool. Um, we vibed, we hung out. Like it, it was just very natural. Um, and no, um, you're a good man, bro. And, and, uh, and, and I see so much success with you. Um, and keep on doing your thing, man, because like, like we talk, sky's the limit, bro. And you're fucking, you're, you're heading up there, man. Thank you. Thank you. God, you are a motivational speaker and you're a feel good <laughs> person, man. God. <sighs> speak the truth. Speak All right, truth, guys. Man. <laughs> yeah 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 no fuck dude i think i i think i need to like hit you up before i go out like dude hey rudy i'm not feeling great about myself hey here you go i'm like yes now i can do this right <laughs> anyways all right guys well thank you guys for joining us on this episode and uh yeah rudy stay for a little bit we'll talk for a little bit afterwards uh yes, but sir. until then guys hope you guys have a phenomenal week get into the gym workout and uh make yourself a priority man Till next time peace out peace. guys all right, man. How did you feel it went? Bro, that was freaking awesome.